Hello and welcome to the latest episode of the Online Warriors podcast. This is episode 4.7. That's season four, episode seven, according to the notes I have in front of me. Speaking of, uh, the person who wrote these notes was not me because, fun fact, I can't write. Uh, That's not true. It's it, When it comes to organizational writing, I feel like it's at least partially true. So Nerd Bomber wrote these notes. I did um, put them she, together. Yeah, she figured I should stop going off on tangents all the time, so she gave me a, a, a kind of like a, a prison of words that I'm going to be locked in for this entire episode. Um, and then we also, that, that laugh you just heard, I think was Tactic One, who's with us once again. Hello. Um, usually I say, I call them like lovely or... I don't know. I don't know what I missed, adjective I did. I, I really missed the adjective this time. Well, what would I, I be I, called? Oh, boy. Uh, something about diligently note-taking. Um, no, I, I would say like like uh, like Dreamweaver. Is that a, that's, not a, that's not an adjective. That's just like a title. No, but I'll take it. It makes me want to sing, sing a song. But like among the online... Dreamweaver. Is that, Is that a, song? a real song? Yeah, it's a real song. Really? What? Are you guys serious? I don't know what the song is. Oh my goodness. We'll have well, to look we'll, this up. We'll play it at the beginning of the next no, we can't do that. We don't have we can't get licensing for anything. Um I just think that Nerd Bomber of the Online Warriors team, and no offense Tactic, I think she might be the dream waiver. It's all of, right. You guys just need team. to look up the song, then I won't take offense. Is it bad is it like a bad song? It's a good song. I enjoy it. I'm going to have to look this up, but we'll get to that later. Um, Nerd Bomber has has weaved some dreams um, for us to all go to bed at night and have. Um, and part of that dream is some internal news and housekeeping. We're making some changes here at Online Warriors. We've decided that y'all listeners are just are just too good. We got to give you more. We got to bring the content. Um, so the first thing we'll be doing is... Uh, making the full history of episodes available on our brand spanking new website. Uh, yeah, for the first I, time ever. Now, because it used to be you could only access the last 10 episodes of the show. So now you can go back and look at all of the episodes to your heart's content, listen to really old news, listen to us banter. Actually, one of the most exciting things for me is we used to do the uh, game show episode or the, the little game show things at the end of the episode. So you can yeah. go back and listen to those. They're fun. You can hear episodes. So fun fact, when we started this podcast, it was before I had hit puberty. Um, my voice sounded just about the same, actually. Um, but yeah, it's, it's been a while. We used to do game shows. Uh, if I remember correctly, Nerd Bomber used to, used to lose a lot. Is that, is that correct? Do I, I think... have remembered correctly? I went on a losing streak, but so did Tectic for the longest time. I think you were the only consistent winner. That's right. That's all I really wanted to hear. Um, we've now transitioned away from game shows into something that I routinely lose at, which we'll get to later. That's, that's more of our ending segment. But um, you can go back, listen to me win game shows, and also, like like Nirmar said, listen to us talk about various things. If you want to hear what we thought about Infinity War, I'm sure that's up there now with Endgame coming out. If you want to see what we were excited about then and what we're excited about now um it's all available on our new website which is, is it just onlinewarriors.com i actually don't know it's onlinewarriorspodcast.com just in case you weren't sure what we did we're not actually licensed warriors but we are podcasters um we're gonna move also this is exciting uh i feel like i need like a drum roll or something Does anyone okay pretty good uh, hopefully you can hear me over that. Uh, we're going to a new, a weekly release schedule. Once a week, we're coming at you. I'm kind of excited we about this. We decided like... that once every two weeks, just I have I have too much stuff to, to tell you guys about. I don't know. There's a lot I'll of news yourself. that comes out week to week, and I think it just gives us time to talk to each other more. Yeah, which like, I, you know, I'm okay with that. I don't know. I don't think Tactic likes talking to me very much, but. I enjoy talking to all of you. Hey, shots fired. So, Don't appreciate that. All you could have said was, I do appreciate talking to you. That's what I appreciate about you. Okay. I think we're, I think we're at a, a good level of appreciation for each other. I love this. I look forward to this every two weeks and now every week. It's going to be a nice little... It's, it, it's like my decompression. I come on and I 
complain about things and talk about nerd stuff. Um, and now I'm going to do that every week. And we're also going to be establishing a Patreon, uh, but that's TBD. Yeah, the we're trying to figure out what the appropriate levels for different Patreon reward tiers are. So we'll be figuring that out and having that established sometime in the near future. And uh, as for the the use of, for the Patreon funds, um, I don't know what. what are we, are we willing to divulge our plans for that right now, or are we not there yet? I mean, right now, I think the major plan would just be to make this podcast self-sustaining, because we do have to pay for hosting and whatnot, so being able to just get rid of those fees would be pretty nice. And then I think future plans would just be making a really good setup, getting better microphones, if you will, if we're in the same place, maybe have a nice little studio setup type thing, maybe go into like a video podcast, who knows? The Cel- world is our oyster. Guests. I was thinking celebrity guests. We yeah, just, that too. We start a massive Patreon campaign to raise, like, how much do you think it would cost? How? What do you think Dwayne The Rock Johnson's podcast appearance fee is? Well, the goal is to become such a big deal that really he Dwayne The Rock us. Johnson. He's asking us. Oh. Okay. I like where your head's at. In the meantime, though, how much do you think it would cost? Too much. I don't even want to think about I it. I mean, like I would, disgusting it amount. would probably be like half a million dollars for half an hour of his time, probably. Like, he wouldn't even have to show up somewhere, but we'd still have to give him half a million just to, like, call into the show. And he'll flex a right bicep. Just a right bicep. Yeah, that's all you hear is just flexing in the microphone. It sounds like it's a half, squeak noise, is how I'd imagine. It's like half a million per bicep. Yep, pretty much. Quite a million so, like, if a you million. only want to peck. A million if you want both biceps. There's no like, there's no discount for like two for one. I don't think so. Well, I think we can. This seems doable to me. I mean, if we, if, if like, if we put this out, social media is an amazing place, and we all now, we also, all three of us have separate uh, Twitter accounts. I am uh, at ow illegal eighty six. Shout out to that amazing account, which has currently like, I think three tweets. Um, so what we can do is we can start tweeting aggressively at Dwayne Rock Johnson. And I think that's worth more than money money can buy. I, think, I, I don't know. Like, what do, you, what do you guys think? I don't know. Harassment lawsuits can buy stuff, too. I don't know. But think about... So remember when they had to name that boat? I forgot what the boat was. But they had... Bodie McBoat face. Yeah, Bodie McBoat yeah. face. If we could do like a petition or something and get enough people to sign this ridiculous petition, maybe he would just have to do it. He is yeah, the rock. Like, He's a people pleaser. He participates in a lot of things. He really does. You know who we could actually probably get is you ever see um I can't think of the guy the guy who's Hellboy now the guy who's in Bad Hellboy um he's also in Stranger Things David Harbour that's his name he does this thing where like he'll just like tweet out or like someone will tweet like hey David Harbour how many retweets of this tweet do you want for you to like host to be like officiate my wedding. And he's like, three million, and then like an hour later, because it's Twitter, that tweet gets three million retweets, and he actually does it. So like, all we have to do is be like, David Harbor, how many retweets for uh, for you to like be on our podcast for like five minutes and like flex a bicep? And he'd be he'd say some number, and then we just have to hit that number. It can't be that hard. No, I don't think I don't, I don't think so. And have you guys seen Stranger Things? Actually, I know this is kind of like a sad thing, but oh, we my. have not. We just started well, watching Game of Thrones, one thing at a time. I haven't even, we, you know, that's actually a good point. We probably should talk about Game of Thrones, but like, I have not seen a single episode of Game what? of Thrones. What? So much yeah. side boob. So well, much uh, side but, boob, there's so much full boob. That's true, yeah. Yeah. If, true. Okay. Season one's Here's, all about the side boob, and then everything after season one is all about full boob, and then after that, it's like just. We don't care People anymore. Dying. You see full on crotch at that point. And like pouring like molten gold on people's heads. That's like season that. two? One. One. I yeah, know. That's the like, first it, season. So my my I don't want to soapbox here as and now we're really going off on a tangent, but like my issues with Game of Thrones. So first of all, you said like show up for the side boob and stay for the boob kind of thing. That was like what you seem to say. Yeah. I look if, if that's what I'm looking for, there's other places to go, man. But you're getting a, a good story, yeah, it's a compelling story and side boob. Yeah, you, in in pornography, you don't you don't get both of those. It's like oh, the so best of both worlds. 
you're just not looking in the right place. Uh, that's that's a joke. I, I think you're right. Um, the, my other, my major problem with it, my bigger problem is that I don't need to watch it now because I already know everything that's happened and everything. I I there was an episode on on a Sunday, and I know what happened. I know like a lot of what happened because it's such a big part of like the cultural zeitgeist now that like everyone's watching it. If you're not watching it, you're lame. And you're going to hear about it. It's just like, you, if you're on social media, if you go on Twitter the Monday after a Game of Thrones episode, you scroll for like five minutes and you know the entire episode. You know all the inter-character dynamics. You know everything. So like, why would I waste an hour watching it? I already know what, what I need to know. See, for me, I, I was one of the hipsters and I, I read these things called books. And it is National Book Day on the day that we're recording this. So shout out to all you paper books out there. Um, but I pretty much knew everything except like what he hasn't written yet for the last season. I've pretty much known what's been happening. So it's more just like the entertainment of watching these things come to life. Kind of like with Harry Potter. Like you, you knew what was going to happen in the movies. You still want to see him. Right. And that's probably why people are so excited about it now is that now we're like, we're in like uncharted waters where like he hasn't even written about this stuff yet. So like people are even more excited. It's going to be so cool. Like I'm not like like i'm not like jealous of fans of it in it, it like i'm not necessarily jealous but like it, i imagine it would be pretty cool to like be a big fan and then be going into this last season wondering like who's going to wind up on the iron throne and all this stuff but like i don't know i also like my other problem with it is that and i started reading one of the books i think i was like it was one of those things where i was like in a barnes and noble like waiting for somebody and i was like i'll just start this and i read like i don't know 10 pages and in those 10 pages of the first book, George R. R. Martin is like, here's here's 30 characters. And yeah, it's too much. It's too much. I can't do it. It's really difficult because he, he hops around a lot too. Like each chapter is kind of a different character. So it's difficult. And until you really get into the second or third book and you have developed enough knowledge of the characters that you can kind of keep them straight, it's really difficult to get into. If you give me more than like seven characters in a book... I'm getting stretched thin, man. My, my brain can't take it. Shout out to books. Happy book day. <laughs> Happy book day to all the books that have more than seven characters. Um, so yeah, I guess we didn't, you know, Game of Thrones wasn't really on the docket, but those are our general thoughts on Game of Thrones, I guess. Um, what is on the docket? Let's, we're going we're gonna to switch it up a little bit. Usually around this time, we would talk about what we've all been up to, quote unquote. But we're going to front load the news this week. So first of all, before we start, how are you guys doing with this? Are you like, are you okay? Are you hyperventilating? Are you freaking out? Right now, I'm like buckled in. I'm ready to go. I like read up on my news. I'm not like winging it this week. So I'm good to go here. Tactic, are you, are you winging it? I'm okay, correct. you're good. Let's talk about uh, one of my favorite, one of my, one of my childhood idols, honestly. Will Smith, he's back. I guess he wasn't really gone, but like he's back in a big way with this new trailer for this movie called Gemini Man. Um, this trailer came out, what, yesterday, right? The day we're recording this, it came out the day before. Right, so yeah, it came out on the 23rd. And right. honestly, did you know that this movie was in production? Like, I, this came out of left field for me. I heard very vaguely, but I didn't know Will Smith was attached to it, but I heard vaguely about it probably months ago. Yeah, Slick Willie was keeping it on the DL. Yeah, uh, Big Willie style, I think he mean to say. That's actually, he was called that, wasn't he? Which one? Big Willie style, I think he was like, actually one of his names. Nah, I like Slick Willie. Um, I am also partial to Slick, Slick Willie. Either way, Slick <laughs> Willie is in this movie, and it seems like the whole... Well, you should pause right now and go watch the trailer if you want to like hear us talk about it, because we're going to talk about it. Um essentially will smith is at war with himself yeah he's like some assassin type figure i think he's like a paid assassin or some kind of mercenary or army man and if they've cloned him and now his clone has grown up and they've sent his clone after him to go basically hunt him down and kill him so it's young clone will smith versus old today will smith so, so like yeah freakish de-aging technology is like the main thing to be discussed here so go on so my i got major there was a movie i don't know when it came out probably like 15 years ago 
starring Jet Li called The One. And it was about him fighting all different versions of himself from different dimensions. And I got strong vibes of that movie from this. And yes, I know this is nothing like that. It's more along the lines of cloning. But I don't know. It seems kind of like a almost like a redo to me. Like it's not going to be something original, as original as it looks. I so so from a story perspective, completely agree. Like the 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 plot that they lay out in, in the trailer is like bits and pieces of movies that we've seen at, at this point like a hundred times. Um, the cloning, kind of spoilery, but there's a Tom Cruise movie that came out like three or four years ago. To maintain the spoiler, the despoileriness, I won't say the name of it, but. but essentially it amounts to him fighting versions of himself um so like very similar thing here the thing to write home about is definitely the the de-aging te- technology like i said so like if you saw captain marvel they did this with samuel L. jackson where they made him look like late 90s samuel L. jackson this is like independence day will smith is that would you say it's a fair vibe based on how he looks in the trailer yeah i think so so my real question for both of you is, and I don't know how much like young Will Smith you've seen, but do you think that actually looks like young Will Smith? I do. I, I do. I know you don't think so. They gave um, him a more defined jaw structure. I think like if there's one thing, the, the jaw structure could be, I'd have, I'd have to examine some side by sides, but I think the thing with it, and like the thing with like uh, DH Princess Leia and like, D.H. Samuel L. Jackson to an extent. I feel like they look like, um, what's the word? They look like, like animatronics sh- to me. To me, they look shiny. Like, yeah. They look like sh- shiny. Like they're like, they literally, and I guess in this sense, in this instance, it makes sense because like he's supposed to be this like hot off the line clone who like has never had anything bad. Like he has no scars or like deformities because he's like this perfectly engineered clone of Will Smith. But like he looks shiny, borderline plastic, I would say. Yeah, I think that's the part that's gonna freak me out because I don't think he's intended to look that way. But even in Captain Marvel, I remember thinking like there were a few times that really caught me off guard how plasticky Samuel L. Jackson looked. And there's, there's no amount yeah. of like acting or buffing out that can really like suspend my disbelief enough for me to like not be kind of creeped out by it. Because it's kind of creepy. Yeah. It has to be unbelievably hard to like to avoid the uncanny valley with that sort of thing like to not make him look like a very lifelike robot or like you know like i can't imagine how difficult the de-aging process is and like based on the trailer like i have definitely seen worse worse attempts at it than what gemini man is uh displaying right like it didn't Um, look bad but i don't know i feel like i'm gonna go through this entire movie thinking like this is a creepy animatronic version of Will Smith. And they could have almost pulled it off better if they found either a lookalike, because God knows there's so many lookalike actors out there, or even get his son. Like, I would find that a little bit more believable. I don't know Yeah, why. but they tried the him and his son thing in that M. Night Shyamalan movie that was terrible, and it was terrible. Yeah, that's true. Also, Jaden Smith. Shout out to Jaden Smith. Isn't, that, isn't he kind of like off the reservation? Isn't he like kind of a nut? Have we confirmed that? He's a What's little he bit of a nut. Days? I don't know. I, there was something recently. I remember just like reading some story about him on maybe like a Snapchat story. And it was like very bizarre. He's an interesting fellow. I mean, if I was Jaden Smith, like I would show up in the news and just be like, Jaden Smith buys an island. And then the article is just like, we don't know why. He just bought an island. That's what That would be my Jaden Smith presence. But he's like... I think he's doing more splashy stuff than that. And like, why? You're Jaden Smith. Just do your thing. <clears throat> I know he was uh, at Coachella. He I... rapped at Coachella. Yeah, he's in the music scene now. He rapped at Coachella? Word. Damn, I got to get on get on the YouTube, see what this is about. Um, I don't know. Like, I, I also didn't think the special effects in the trailer looked very good. But like, also, Ang Lee is like... He's like a pretty big deal. That's the director. He's the guy that directed Brokeback Mountain. He did Life of Pi too, right? I believe he did Life of Pi. I was looking at this just before and I closed it. He did Life of Pi, Crouch and Tiger, Hidden Dragon, Brokeback Mountain. Um, the version of the Hulk that was bad. I feel like, I mean, that's not a good, I feel like I should just mention that, even though it's not like something that Ang Lee is known for. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, he's done a bunch of movies. Uh, a number of which have been considered very, very good and have won like a bunch of Oscars. So like, 
probably it will be good. I don't know. Like it's I, I'm I'm not as enthralled by it as I want to be. If that makes sense. Yeah, I feel like the internet was in like a hubbub about it, and I was just kind of. It looked okay, maybe. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I think my theory on it is that we all, and I'm include, I, I include myself in this. We all just want, we want like 2004 Will Smith back. I want that man back so badly. I want Hitch. I just want Hitch. I want Hitch too. I mean, it must start there. But like, I also just like, there was that like golden age of Will Smith, right? Where he made like Men in Black, Men in Black 2, Hitch, uh, uh hancock well hancock not really but like uh i am legend i robot like he was just pumping pumping out like a movie a year it's kind of like what the rock is doing now i guess he's pumping yeah. out like a movie a year they were all at least reasonably good besides the rock so like the rock some of his movies are not even in the realm of reasonably good is there any actor today that is anything like what will smith was back in the early 2000s in terms of like blockbuster potential, mm-hmm. I don't, I can't think of anyone. Like, there's no one who really pumps out a ton of movies like that, and of like a bunch of different genres. Oh my goodness, help me out here, Jurassic Park. Oh, Chris Pratt. That's Chris a pretty Pratt. good answer. Yes, that's a pretty good answer. Yeah, um, but, even but he's, he's kind of cooled off. And he All just of the like Avengers. Epics. Yeah. Jurassic Park. That's but true. that's a franchise. You, you have to remember that besides Men in Black, Will Smith, like, he wasn't a franchise guy. He was a write a movie, write a standalone movie and make me your guy guy. That was, like, what he was. Like, I'm just, I'm, like, I'm trying to, like, Google Will Smith movies and just to, like, see if I can pick out the golden years of, like, Will Smith. Because they were just, oh, man. 2006, Pursuit of Happiness. 2007, I Am Legend. 2005, Hitch. 2008, Seven Pounds, which, like, I feel like is a very underrated movie. It's super sad, but it's very underrated. I'm going to stick uh, with my, my answer. We have The Lego Movie 1, The Lego Movie 2, Maleficent, Guardians of the Galaxy, Passengers, Avengers, Jurassic Park, Avengers, Jurassic Park, A Jurassic World, Avengers. <laughs> right, but again, those are all franchises. They're all franchises. Like, They're all franchises. Smith, like, really... But it's, like, multiple different franchises. You, you're going from the Lego movie. I'm going to stick with that. I guess we are in, like, today's climate, it's all about the franchises. So if you are looking at it holistically, like, okay, if Will Smith yeah. was in today's world, I guess he would be a franchise guy. And, I mean, he is, technically. He was in, um, shoot, bad DC movie. Suicide Squad. Yes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, like, I, I just, when I look back at, like, okay, so... Hitch is one of my favorite movies ever. If you if you didn't already know that, then you haven't listened to the podcast because I feel like I mentioned Hitch before. That came out in two thousand five, right in the middle of the. I mean, for, for looking at it, like from two thousand two, no two thousand, like all the way up through like two thousand eight, he was making one good blockbuster movie a year, without fail. And like 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 a number of like there were so like Bad Boys was another one of his franchises, Men in Black was one. But like for the most part, they were just these standalone movies that he would just make one after the other after the other, sometimes two a year. And it was amazing. He was so good. And I, I want it back. I want it back so bad. Like when Bright was coming out, I was like, I hope Bright is good. Bright wasn't good. Um I saw Concussion, which is a twenty fifteen movie about the NFL that like was very middling. He hasn't had like a huge hit since like, probably since I was in high school. Yeah. And I want that back. So like, I hope this is good. I hope it's really good. I think Suicide Squad was like his biggest attempt in the last few years. And even that, like it was just such a not great movie. Yeah, like as I scroll through this, I am seeing nothing that suggests to me that he had any good movies past like i said i think like 2008 2008 hancock came out maybe he's hancock just being, was maybe he's just being and, smart about it you know a lot of the times they see these scripts and they go eh, this could be a gamble i mean it could be it could definitely be that it could also be that he's like getting old and like doesn't have the energy for like putting out two movies a year anymore which is like totally understandable um I saw. Do you guys see that he came out with a movie called Focus in 2015? That was like, we did awesome. see that. That it was, was like okay. It was like okay. very average. So like, I, yeah, I just I can't think of 
I, I, Chris Pratt is close. I will give you that. Like in terms of movie stars today, Chris Pratt is maybe the closest you will get. But it just doesn't feel the same to me. I don't know. I, and, and like you said, I think it might be because the era of movies has just totally changed. But I want I want that Will Smith back, and I hope we get it back. Will Smith, if you're listening, uh, we want you back. Um. So that's Gemini Man. Let's talk about the Samsung folding phone, um, which I think we talked about this like two or three episodes ago, didn't we? No, this all pretty much happened over the weekend. Um, well, but we talked. Didn't we talk about the folding phone like coming out? I think or we talked maybe? about the concept when we talked about um, the consumer electronics show. Oh yeah, almost certainly. Um, well, since then, some bad things have happened. Yeah. So. Right, so the phone was actually supposed to come out relatively soon. I think it was like this week. And they gave out a bunch of test units for review. And a lot of the reviewers were finding that the phone would actually break. So one of the instances, there was like a, a protective layer that people were mistaking for like some kind of removable film. So they were taking it off and then that would break the phone. But also just within like a day or two of using it, the phone would break. And yeah. It's just, it sounds like it's not even repeat. Like it sounds like there there are phones that are. It's not like they're all breaking in the same way. It sounds like they're breaking in different ways that like should have been caught a while ago. Was my general vibe from this? Right. And so the phone was supposed to cost two thousand dollars. So to have a, a device that would break within a couple of days is obviously like super unacceptable. So Samsung, after all the bad reviews and publicity over the weekend, they actually pulled the phone and they're going to go through and redesign it and try to fix the problem and they've pushed out the release date but it's just like how do you get this far where you're a few days away from releasing the product and it's still breaking like how did no one catch that if it's literally that widespread where it was almost every reviewer calling out that this thing was breaking how does this happen how many people do you think got fired because like when i when i read this article my first thought is like an entire division of Samsung got fired. So let me, like let me, I have some theories about this. So let's talk about Samsung's products, specifically the phone market or the tablet market rather, or the phone market. I don't know what you want to call it, one Which or the one? other. But either way, it's not a very dynamic device. It's not very mechanical. There's not a lot of moving parts, right? It's a, it's a slab. Of technology, but it's and, a folding slab. Right. Oh, wait, you're talking about just you're talking about just I'm, the tablet. I'm talking or... about I'm talking about the division that makes these phones. Right. Their bread and butter is not moving parts. It's it's a it's a slab of be. of technology that has some kind of interface to it and some software to it and some electrical to it. There's nothing moving. So I'll bet you money that the the talent pool of strictly mechanical people to review and, and maybe develop these things didn't have a lot of experience there and that's kind of probably how this fell through that's my theory so you think they were like in a boardroom and like some guy who like just works on computers was like just throw a hinge on it then they did and they're like this will be fine and then it wasn't fine sure absolutely. i could i could, I, mean, I could see that happening Fatigue on mechanical parts, everyone thinks that when their background is mechanical parts, right? But, right. you know, it comes differently with other backgrounds. But I mean, okay, so I, I know I have an OtterBox on my phone and I can drop this thing now and it doesn't break. But if I ever even considered putting any kind of metal part and any kind of pressure near the screen of my phone, I would be sweating. Like... I well, yeah, you're, imagine... you're a consumer. You're a consumer. They're, they're producers. They don't care. Right, but, like, even the concept of putting a hinge next to two screens, like, that just seems like a terrible idea. And I know they probably should have vetted it out further, but, like, even how did they not test it out and be like, oh, this doesn't work? Well, yeah, like, it, the, some of the failure modes, like, the one failure mode that this article mentions is, like, a quote-unquote debris seemingly made its way into the hinge and underneath the inside display that had to be a catchable mistake <laughs> like and that is like when, when you introduce a hinge the first thing i would ask is like as an engineer is like what if something gets caught in there well that's the first thing is it possible that they were banking on 
them just having good reviews from what and that that was going to be their catch all so they skipped the early testing to get it to market quicker. Yeah, but if you go back a couple years ago when iPhone first started releasing like their giant behemoth phones and they were like bending in people's back pockets, that was a terrible terrible yeah. marketing and PR disaster for Apple. Like Apple used to be known as one of the highest quality companies that you could get products from. And as soon as those phones started bending, I think Apple really took a hit. And not to say that that in itself was part of the downfall or like the downside of Apple products, but they've definitely been called into question since that happened. Yeah, I, I just, for me, it's hard to, Samsung is one of the biggest tech companies in the world. It's probably in the top 10. I feel like it's probably not going too far to say that. How do you not, as a, as a company that big and with that much of reputation on the line, I feel like you can't rely on reviews to like beta test your products. Right, but there's a, there's a certain level of, I mean, they could have fallen behind schedule because of lead time of smaller components and they said, you know what, let's just rush it to, to stay competitive because they've already released the uh, the notion of the device, which which both gives them brownie points but also puts them against the clock, right? I suppose that's true. I don't know. Like, I would have thought they would have learned something from the, like, remember the exploding phones they had, too? Oh, yeah. That that, that was, was relatively recently, too. Yeah. Samsung Note. That was, I think that was, like, a few years ago. But, like, you would think they would have learned something from that. And that was, like, I feel like that had the, the air of, like, a much harder to catch issue. This is just, like, easy to catch issues that they were, like, whatever, man. Which, like, I don't know. I've always been an iPhone guy. So I don't really have a horse <laughs> in this race. But, like... Uh, on the broader spectrum, so the whole the whole point of this phone is that at, on the folded up level, it's basically the size of your phone, and then you unfold it, and it's like a little tablet. For $2,000, you could buy a phone and buy like 10 tablets. You could have so many Fire tablets, so that if you really wanted to carry around a Fire tablet, you could have like 10 of them in your backpack. Well, Fire tablets are like... Uh, I'm not sure they're the best example because Amazon is trying to give away those fire. Like every time I go to look at the cost of a fire tablet, there's really like either free or like someone's trying to throw it through my window just to make me have it. Like they're like, they're like 30 bucks. Aren't they? Aren't they like super cheap? I think so. Yeah. At this point. So like, that's a good point. Like just get a, get the nicest phone on the market, which is probably like a thousand dollars and then get a $30 Amazon fire tablet. And the added bonus of that is that then you can beat the crap out of this fire tablet. And if it breaks, it's fine. It costs $30. And like the thing that I'm trying to wrap my head around with this whole folding phone concept in general. So part of the reasons why tablets can have higher processing power than your regular phone is because there's more space. It's a bigger, bigger surface area. You can pack more processors and stuff in there. I don't really know hardware, so I could be talking out of my ass. That's very, a real possibility. Mm-hmm. But, like, with a phone, now you're basically taking all of that extra space because you've had the, hinge in, the hinges and you have, like, now co compartmentalized this device. I just, are you trying to make a device that's jack of all trades, master of none? And then what's, mm, the, what's yeah. the worth of that? Why would you pay $2,000 for that? I think they are trying to make that device. That device, which is a jack of all trades, master of none, and they're trying to sell it for $2,000. Do you know why? Because they can. Bet, well, that would be one reason, but I think they probably had some focus group or some chowder head was like, I got an idea. What if we had a phone that folded and made a tablet? And they were like, we could charge $2,000 for that. And this you know, numbskull would buy it. It feels, it feels like as far as the next big innovation on cell phones, these companies are grasping at straws. Because they can't think of the next actual one. And isn't that I, I sad agree. that we've kind of hit a standstill from a technological innovation standpoint? Honestly, well, don't I don't need anything else to happen to my phone except an increased battery life. If you, someone could figure out a way to make my phone last like three or four days on a single charge and still maintain all of the capabilities of my current iPhone, that would be something that I would spend a ton of money for. So this is this is a good kind of conversational way to wrap this up, wrap this topic up is like, okay, Tactic, what do you think the next big, let's say you're sitting in Samsung and they're like, what do we do? 
Break out What's of phones. Leave thing? the phone. Like phones, I, they can't really do much more. I, I'm sorry, and I, and I don't mean to say that I'm. I won't mean to say I'm not innovative either. I think it's. So you're agreeing with Nerdover, and you're saying phones are done. We've gone as far as we can with phones. Yeah, for now. I think there's thing leaps, other leaps that we can take, and I've gone down the soapbox before with quantum computing in the past, but I think until we get that leap, let's focus on some other stuff. I want to hear, you know, better headphones. Samsung has headphone technology. Make me feel like I'm at a concert, you know. I've, I've and and make it affordable. You can have concert-like headphones, but at what cost? Get me affordable, amazing headphones. See, now, where I think phone technology is going, maybe not in the immediate future, but I think it will go there eventually, is, what's the word I'm trying to think of? Let me Google it to make sure I'm not saying the wrong word, but I'm pretty sure it's transhumanism. Have you heard of that word? No. Transhumanism I mean, yes, is... but please tell our viewers. So, right. So, transhumanism, according to dictionary which is just when I Googled it, uh, the belief or theory that the human race can evolve beyond its current physical and mental limitations, especially by means of science and technology. So what I'm talking about is the intersection of biology and technology. I'm saying that if you want to call your friend, if you want to play Candy Crush, if you want to do whatever, you're not going to take a phone out of your pocket. You're going to do something with your hand and it's going to be on or on or in your hand. Or it's going to be a hologram that comes out of your hand. Or the the actual handset is going to be in your head so that you when you want to call someone, you just think about calling someone. And then it freaking calls them. That's where I think we're going. It's going to take a billion years to get there and a lot of legislation. But that's the next big thing. Because otherwise, I, I agree. It's done. We've done all we can. So that's my soapbox. Phone light. You said soapbox about quantum computing. That's my soapbox. It's like... This idea of like turning us practically into robots is where I think we're, we're headed. I'm for that. I mean, there's been plenty of shows on the History Channel about you know internal sensing when your body gets sick. Let's go there. I'm full steam ahead. Right, and and, and that's a like that's a good point. Is like we're already practically trying to go there with like, oh, you can put this Fitbit on your wrist and you can monitor your heart rate. Someone's eventually. And that might be the soonest like avenue for it to happen. It's like someone's going to be like, you know what? Instead of putting this on my wrist, just put it in me, just so it's there and I can like check it on online. And someone will do that. And like, I I, I legitimately think it's all heading that way. It's just a matter of time and a matter of technology. I completely agree. Um, so, you heard it here first. Uh, transhumanism. Well, you didn't hear transhumanism here first, but you heard my thoughts on where I think phone technology is going. Um, Speaking of new where, technology. Yeah, yeah, go on. Not to steal the reins from you, but I am very excited. So last week, at the end of last week, there was a Wired exclusive article uh, detailing some of the new, um, basically details, of the next PlayStation console. And they sat down with execs at Sony, and right now, it sounds pretty incredible. There's no, like, firm details in terms of timing, when it's going to come out, or, like, exact specs. But they did say that the console will be able to support ray tracing, which will greatly improve graphics and games, and will allow for the support of 3D audio, which was one of the things that the Sony executive did say they're super focused on. Because between the PlayStation 3 and the PlayStation 4, um, there was a big advancement in graphics, but audio-wise, nothing really changed, so they're looking to make that next leap in audio. Um, they also are going to have a solid-state drive instead of a standard hard drive, optical hard drive, which means that games will load so much faster. And I think, Illegal, I know you're a Spider-Man fan as well, because we both played the game, but I think they did a test where like they loaded up um, Spider-Man. a fast travel. Yeah, a fast travel on the PlayStation 4, and it took something like 15 to 18 seconds, whereas it took like under a second on the new PlayStation. Yeah, so. like 0.6 seconds. That's like, that's the part of the article, because I've read the whole article. That's the part that like I most remember, and the part that most stuck with me is imagining 
this idea of like you're playing spider-man you want to fast travel but you don't want to sit there watching him on the subway in that like loading screen for 15 to 18 seconds i guess which feels like an eternity when you're playing spider-man did you like so after the first like four or five fast travels when it started to become the same video clip over and over again i never i used fast travel like twice yeah i stopped using fast travel because it was almost more engaging to just travel through the city itself like the fast travel totally broke my immersion and that's like that's kind of a bad example because like swinging through the city is also like the funnest thing in the world but like how many games have you played where you like you like open a door and then it's like loading and you're like god damn. <laughs> it just like kills your flow and like kills your immersion and like and i get distracted like then i start going on twitter and i stop paying attention to the game or I, that's when I get up and go to the bathroom, and then I get distracted by the kitchen, and then I don't come back for a little bit. So you, you can say that you get distracted in the bathroom, because it's happened to all of us. It's funny that that was your guys' biggest takeaway. For me, that wasn't. I actually, I don't know, I usually do a little dance when uh, it's loading, and, and a lot of times I get sweaty because games get intense. You so do I a use, little dance? Yeah, I use it as a break to kind of go, huh, and relax. So I don't mind the loading screen. The biggest takeaway for me was actually the fact that they're making it such that the PSVR is compatible with this new console. And that's that's huge for me because I'm, I'm very much frugal when it comes to spending money. And I, I don't want to buy a new console and have to buy a new VR system. Right. So because, that, I mean, the VR system alone, and, and I don't know how much they are now, but at least when they first launched, the PSVR system... With something like three hundred bucks, yeah. so could you imagine when the PlayStation Four first came out and they didn't receive or they didn't give us a price point on the new console? They did say it would be reasonable for the technology in the console, but that lends me to that believe it's mean, like I mean, four hundred to five hundred dollars in my head. Yeah. So could you imagine spending almost a grand if you're really into VR on a new console and a new VR setup? Like no. I just think it's amazing that they're allowing the PSVR to be forward compatible. I think they're, like, I, I do like the general focus that they have, because you mentioned the 3D audio too, and like, I mean, what's what's your guys, what's the importance of headphones to you guys? Because like, I've played certain games where like, it is critically important. And like, and actually VR is like, one of the more uh, recent experiences I've had with that, where like, having the headphones in adds a huge amount. And like, but even like standard analog games, like, like for and horror games are a perfect example of like having the headphones in and having an immersive audio experience is a huge part of it. So like, I totally am behind their focus on that as well. I mean, headphones to me, and I don't really use headphones a whole lot because usually Tactic and I are playing together. So unless we're playing on separate consoles, I usually don't have headphones in. But I do have a room set up where we have the uh, surround sound, and there's not many games that utilize it very well. Like. It's kind of there, but it's not super u- well utilized. Like, the quality of the 3D audio in games is just not where it should be, considering we have 4K quality video at this point in time. And that's actually that's a good point because, like, I think and I mentioned horror games specifically, and I think that's because I imagine it's it's both a hardware issue and also a game developer issue, where like horror game developers focus so much in my experience so much of their time and effort on sound design sound design and making making 3d audio or like getting as close to it as they can because they know how important that is to the genre but like call of duty like they don't care well i disagree I, there i can't imagine actually that. call of duty if you play that with a really good set of headphones it makes you super competitive yeah you become way more competitive because you can hear people sneaking up behind you it it's actually very immersive if you get into those type of games Fair point. I haven't played any shooters, and the last shooter I played was Destiny, and I feel like they probably didn't care much about sound, but yeah, PS5 sounds pretty cool. It is going to be called the PS5, right? I mean, I would assume so. That would follow the trend, but you never want to assume. You know what they say. Now, the one, the thing you wrote, and again, I'm referring to the back to the meeting, the meeting notes, the show notes here. After PS5, you wrote xbox one sad right so can you get into that one of the other releases at the end of last week was the xbox one sad it was oh man was it it was something oh no the xbox one s all digital edition which when 
pared down into its acronym form is Xbox One Sad Edition, which... It's a sad Xbox One. You have to wonder if they knew that. Like, did some marketing person not, like, squeeze all the number or the letters together and be like, this spells sad? Or, like, did they do that on purpose because there's no disk drive and it's kind of sad? It um, might be re rebranded down the road, I have a feeling. So, well, I think it's it's slated for release sometime in the next coming months. And basically, they took the Xbox One S, they removed the disk drive, did literally nothing else to the case, like, is exactly the same. And they're selling it for, what is it, $250 right now? Which is just absurd. The price is that more or less? At, at this point more. in time, I know... I'm pretty sure you can buy an Xbox One S with a disc drive in it for $199 at most retailers. And they did say that you would able to buy you'd be able to buy the Xbox One Sad Edition for $50 less than the Xbox One S. But like It doesn't seem worth it at it all. It doesn't seem worth it. And the games that they bundled with it, I'm I'm guessing they did this to bundle something with Game Pass. But the games that they included with the console are all on Game Pass anyway, so what are you getting? It's just very Bottom confusing. Line is, well, no, I think it's very sad. Yes, very sad. It's very, very, very sad. Um, so I guess we, we can leave it at that. Um, let's, let's just let's kind, of, kind of decompress, head into the chill zone. The chill, what are you doing Wednesday zone? Even though today's Tuesday. This is coming out on Wednesday. That's a fun fact about the podcast for those that don't know. What are you up to Wednesday? We actually do it on Tuesday, so it's kind of disingenuous. But you guys hear um, it on Wednesday, so it works out. Yeah, if, if look, this is a good chance to engage with us. If you have moral issues with us calling it, what are you up to Wednesday? Is it what are you up to Wednesday or what are you doing Wednesday? I think we've always called it what are you up to Wednesday. If you have major issues with us calling it what are you up to wednesday drop us a note on twitter either on the nerd bomber account the tactic account the illegal account or just any of the accounts i mean we're, we're all we're happy to, there on twitter we're all there i mean will we listen to it yes we will listen to it we absolutely will um we're not married to the name i don't think um anyways tactic what have you been up to wednesday you know, with this past holiday, it was a lot of food for Easter. I know I uh, had my fair share of tisky because there's a big Polish culture where I live. So do tell us, what is Dingus Day, Tactic? Well, I didn't even say about Dingus Day yet. but And I celebrated Dingus Day. And what Dingus Day is, is typically... It's not made up. People think it's made up, I know, just from hearing you say it. This is what I what I think it is because it wasn't around where I grew up, but when I moved to a new location, undisclosed, um, it was very prevalent. And what I've gathered is the day after Easter, many Polish people gather to get drunk. I think that's what it's celebrating. I think it's supposed to celebrate, if, if you're a religious person, I think it's celebrating like the end of Lent and Easter's happiness now. So then, because so all of Lent, you're supposed to been sacrificing something. But only Polish people. Well, Polish people are the ones who celebrate Dingus Day. I'm sure everyone celebrates the fact they can, like, eat chocolate again. Let me just, let me read the, uh, I, I have the Wikipedia article up. It also has to do something with love, because men are squirting women with squirt guns, and women yeah. are hitting men with pussy willows. Spoilers, Which... I was going to talk about that. Um, it's, it's actually called Smeek, I don't know if I'm pronouncing this right. I am Polish, but doesn't mean I can speak Polish. Smigus Dingus. Uh, also, Smigus Dingus. Meaning, quote unquote, Wet Monday in Polish. So that's what you celebrated, Wet Monday. Mm -hmm. um, it's a celebration held on Easter Monday, mostly in Poland, but also in Czech Republic, Slovakia, Hungary, and parts of Western Ukraine. For a whole day, it is also observed by Polish diaspora communities, particularly among Polish Americans who call it Dingus Day. Um, also worth noting that People can probably narrow down pretty easily where you are uh, based on your celebration of Dingus Day. It's not very widely celebrated, believe it or not. Um, with that said, uh, you spoiled one of the major traditions. Traditionally, boys throw water over girls 
and spank them with pussy willow branches on Easter Monday, and girls do the same to boys. This is accompanied by a number of other rituals, such as making verse declarations and holding door-to-door processions in some regions involving boys dressed as bears. I've never heard that part. Oh, can I celebrate that one? Go and for hey, it. there's always some next year. Um, I have gone to a Dingus Day celebration with you guys. This was many years ago. Um, but it was great. It's fun. You do some polka. You drink some beer. Eat some pierogies. And dress like bears. This is Apparently. exciting. <laughs> Now, as pierogies go, are we talking meat pierogies, cheese pierogies, sauerkraut pierogies? What's um, the situation? I'm all about the kraut pierogi. I don't know if I've ever had a meat pierogi, like, ever. It's called an empanada. Yeah, I'm pretty it's sure actually, that, like, goes into, like, the empanada realm of food. Yeah, meat pierogies might... I might have just made those up right now. Or, I think I'm... Is it potato, another one? Yeah, mm-hmm. potato is a big one. Okay. Just forget I said meat. We'll edit it in. We'll edit it after. We'll recut this whole thing. Um... We don't have the budget for that. Support us on Patreon and maybe maybe we'll (laughs) we'll edit out me saying meat pierogies. Um, But that's cool. Dingus Day. Everybody's Polish on Dingus Day. What about you, Illegal? What have I done? Uh, Well, I didn't celebrate Dingus Day because I'm in a part of the country that if you say Dingus Day to somebody, they like think you sneezed or something. Which, speaking of sneezing, it's allergy season and I... I just want to say I'm very proud of myself for not sneezing at all during this episode of the podcast. Um, so far, I mean, so far, so good. We've probably got like 10 minutes to go, but um, that has been pretty brutal. Uh, this past weekend, I saw Pet Cemetery, which I'm a little late to seeing that because it's been out for like three weeks. I don't have much to say about that, honestly. It was very middling as experiences go. Um, at this point, the name of the game for me is... A couple of things. Uh, one, I started watching Sherlock, which super late to that one too. I think I'm watching season one, which is like from 2010. Have you guys ever watched this? I haven't. I've heard some pretty good things about it, but I haven't watched it. It's supposed to be great. And I, I, I'm, I've only watched one episode because every episode is an hour and a half long, which is another interesting thing about it. Um, episode one was fantastic. Uh, it's as good as everyone says it is. It's super British. If you don't like British stuff, don't watch it. Which you might have not needed to know that because, like, it's called Sherlock and it's on BBC. But, like, it is very, very British. But, I mean, Um, Game of Thrones is very British. So I don't think many people are that biased against British stuff. Yeah, but Game of Thrones is, like, Lord of the Rings British, which is, like, a totally different British. This is true. Yeah, like, if if you're British and you're listening to this, shout out to British folks everywhere. Just... You know, you know what I'm talking about. Um, other than that, though, I've really just been trying to quell my hype for Avengers Endgame, which at the time of you know, you're listening to this, it'll be like two days away from coming out. I'm not seeing it until next week. I have to survive an entire week That's, without being spoiled. Honestly, it's very brave of you because I don't think you can make it. Like, not anything to do with you, but I just think it's impossible in today's day and age to make it an entire week after this movie comes out without knowing anything about it. Yeah, so I, I'm going to see it the Wednesday after. So it's, I think it's really like five days. But yeah, like, I mean, a- a- am I a hero? I can't really say. It, but yes. Like, it's going to be so hard. I can't. I'm going to have to stay off the internet for an entire weekend at least. So, like, are you busy? What, like, are you just taking one for the team, seeing if you can do it? I... Oh, I'm. I have family visiting. Um, that's the main reason, um, and also like, there's at least some small part of me that, in spite of like wanting to be a part of this like huge cultural phenomenon, I also am like slightly agoraphobic, and like, the idea of sitting in a completely full theater watching it doesn't like super appeal to me. Um, that makes sense. Yeah, I. I, I, don't I know. have like, this weird thing where, in in today's day and age you can pretty much book your seat ahead of time in most theaters. And I don't know. I don't like sitting next to people I don't know because I'm very specific when I go see a movie. I hate movie talkers. I hate when people are, like, crinkling stuff throughout the entire movie or, like, they take the armrest. Or the one time I had someone who was asleep next to me, but they, like, curled up and were facing me the whole time and their eyes were, like, half open and it was just super bizarre. And so I felt like they were staring... Oh man, it was something we saw over this the summer. I don't Must remember. Not a very good movie. I don't remember what movie it was. We saw a lot of movies because we still had Movie Pass. 
Um, oh, right. I just remember R. feeling R. very uncomfortable because they were like, it felt like they were staring at me. So then I was distracted the whole movie. Wait, did you say you still have present tense? You still have movie pass? No, we had still it? had it back okay. then. Yeah, I can't. The theater near me, I they you can't like reserve a specific seat. So like, I just I got my tickets for next Wednesday, but I'm just gonna like show up and hope for the best. Which like, that alone is scary. I I, I almost sprung for like a Sunday matinee, but I, I was I was I was like that's that's too soon. I don't. I'm not thrilled by the idea of like big crowds of people in movie theaters because like when I went to see Us, which was very recently, that was like a month ago, and like. I saw that Sunday night of opening weekend, I think. And the theater was very crowded. I'm going to sound old here, but it was like a bunch of like youngsters on their phones and like talking. That is the worst. Just put it away. You paid Based like the 12 of... to $15. Stop. There were, it was like, there was this humongous group. It had to be like 10 to 12 people. Like they were almost taking up an entire row and it was the row right behind me. And I think it was like a group date situation. Like, like there's 10 to 12 people and there was so much giggling and just so much like, I could feel, I was like sitting in the splash zone of like the flirtation oh. and it was just, it was awful. It was awful. I mean, the movie was great. Great movie. Uh, I would have traded in the experience for something different. Uh, so I, I like I saw Lady Bird in a theater. This was like that was like a long time ago, but I saw Lady Bird in a theater with like four old people, and it was great. We're, we're we all still hang out sometimes. That's the way to do it. I'm all for not seeing movies on opening night, honestly. Yeah, the the last premiere I went to, I went to Kingsman: The Golden Circle, which I think was like last year sometime, or maybe even the year before. But like, was that a very again, busy premiere? It sold out. And it was like, again, great movie. Um, but like, I remember very vividly, and this is a weird, it's a weird thing to get annoyed or pissed off about. But I remember the credits started rolling. Like the movie started playing, the previews ended and the movie started. And as the movie started and like the title screen came up, a group of like, it, again, same thing, a group of like 12 either like college kids or high school kids came in and looked and were like, oh my God, where are we going to sit? Because like, obviously there was nowhere for them to sit. So they're like milling around in the front of the theater talking about it. And I hated them so much. And I was like, I'm never, I'm never going to an opening night premiere again. And that's, that brings us to now basically. So yeah, I'll be seeing you next Wednesday. Very excited. Nerd Bomber, what's the deal? Give us the 411. Um, so I know on the last podcast episode, I had been talking about getting into The Walking Dead, the final season. So I've been peppering Illegal since then with getting him to try to play the game, the entire I've been series. Peppered. Peppered. Um, but I, I did, I finally finished the final season, and it was literally everything that I hoped it would be. The I think they gave the ending a really good just send off the entire series I think was really well wrapped up I don't want to give any spoilers away but I think they just did justice to a really good series which probably in my opinion and I don't know what you thought um tactic but the Walking Dead series was probably like the best storytelling that I've seen in a game in a very long time I pretty much have one thing and one thing to say only Disco Broccoli you're so cool <laughs> Um, also my favorite Easter egg in any game ever. So I, they did release in the last week, they released a definitive edition with every single episode and season on one disc and then a bunch of like fun collectibles, like a t-shirt, um, a plush of disco broccoli, which if you've played the game, you know what that is. Super cool. Um, just a bunch of fun stuff in one package and I, I spent a hundred dollars and it was a little bit painful, but I did it and that is basically besides that and just eating a lot with a holiday. It's really been what I've been up to. There you have it, folks. Oh, and we did we did play Unravel too. You did bring up a good point, Tactic. I bought Unraveled, so we've been playing that together. For those of you you who like couch co op, it is a phenomenal game, and it's it's both puzzly and you don't need to be great at video games it's just it's something great to do with 
with the buddy on the couch, honestly. I'll have to try and play that with my cat. Yep, that's what Shout I was... I mean, cats do like yarn. Cat co-op. Shout out to my cat. It's really not my cat. It's my girlfriend's cat, but... You should honestly... Can you make this a thing, like cat co-op? Yeah. Is it, should it be two cats playing a game together? There's the next innovation, guys. We figured it out. Cat co-op. So we'll get that into development. Um, I think we're pretty much out of time, but but people are, are clamoring, clamoring for an update on the Online Warriors Fantasy Movie League. And uh, and here it is. I forgot to play again. That's that, that's what happened. I forgot a week. Um, womp, I'm not proud womp, of it. Womp. Not proud of it at all. Uh, Nerd Bomber is currently leading by roughly $9 million, um, which, like, in the grand scheme of things, she's she's catchable. But, um, oh, sorry, that was for the week. Overall, yeah, you're going to lead by $25 week. million. Um, so, yeah, that's a little bit more of a dent uh, in my hopes for, for winning. But there's a big week coming up this week. Endgame is coming out. I have my lineup set. I did not forget, so... We'll see what happens. Tectic hanging in at a cool, cool second place where he likes to be. Yo. Where he lives. Um, As yeah, Hiss would say, that... this is your home. This is your home. Oh, what a movie. I'm going to go watch that right now. We should do We should do an episode of the podcast where it's just us watching Hitch and just like live stream, just like talking about Hitch. I mean, it could think... be like Mystery Science Theater. If there's ever an episode, like a week where like you guys both can't do it, I'm just I'll just do it and just like talk through Hitch. That'll be like my contribution. Um in the meantime, thanks for listening. Uh we appreciate all y'all. Um check us out on Twitter at Online Warriors One, because we're number one, as you should know. Uh also on Facebook and Instagram. And uh, leave us a review on iTunes so that we know how much you love or hate us. Hopefully love. Um, and yeah, we just we we appreciate y'all. Here's to a great summer of online warrior ing and podcasting. And yeah, that's Hope all to I see got. See you next week. Good talk. <laughs>